What is up my thrifty friends? Tabs here from the Urban Goddess Shop. I am a Canadian reseller. I am a mom to two girls, a wife. I work part-time in a hospital pharmacy and I love to sell used clothing. Here is my little space on YouTube where I share everything about my business. If you're new to my channel and you like this content, make sure to give me a thumbs up and tap subscribe to join the crew. Okay, let's jump right into this. I'm so excited. These are the top 20 sales of 2022. So the entire year I went through all my data and found these sales. I am blown away by the items that I have sold this year because some of them were so long ago, I completely forgot about it. The total value of these 20 items is $3,095. That's crazy. That is so crazy. I think it's great to look back and find out what your top sales are so you know which brands, styles, items, categories are your top selling items. And this is probably what you want to be sourcing more of and figuring out ways to find these items. We're going to jump right into this because I am just too excited to hold it in. And we are going to start at the lowest value. First item to talk about are these beautiful Clark tall chunky heel boots. Uh, they sold for $108. I actually sat on these for a year and thought maybe I had them overpriced. Clark's boots hold really good value. They're excellent quality. Brand new, these boots were over $200. And style tags that I included for these boots, leather, minimalist, and contemporary. I'm also gonna do style tags here and there if I think that they may have an impact on your sales. Number 19 is a brand we all know, Patagonia or Patagucci. This is one of my favorite brands to find and more because I love outdoor technical gear. I love finding Patagonia. It's very rare. I do find it here and there. This was a stretch rain shadow jacket. It sold for $110. Funny story is this jacket actually sold twice. The first time it sold, I don't know what was up, but the buyer was not happy. She said there was stains. She took these pictures that were like overexposed, super close up. I didn't argue. I was like, you know what, whatever, send it back. I'm gonna toss it in the wash and I'm gonna resell it. When I got it back, I actually couldn't find the staining. So I still rewashed it, listed it, and it sold again. It was a fantastic jacket. The first case was just a bogus case. And here's the best part. The first time I sold it for $95 and the second sale, I sold it for more at 110. I like that. That's karma. That's good karma coming back to me. Item number 18 on this list is a pair of Stuart Wiseman black leather over the knee boots. These sold for $110. I sourced these for like 16 bucks at a buy sell trade store. Stuart Wiseman tall boots still do very well. If you can come across these, I would scoop them up because they hold good value. Some of the boots are retailing from 500 up to $1,000. Number 17 is one of my favorite things to find and it's a vintage brown shearling Penny Lane sheepskin jacket. This was in a size small and it was actually made in Canada. So I'm always making sure if it is made in Canada or the US that I'm putting that into the title because people are looking for North American made products. This jacket sold for $118. One of the reasons why I think it maybe sold for a little bit less was there were some minor flaws and discoloration. I don't think that completely will diminish the value of the jacket, but I, I do think it had a small impact at what the total price could have been. For these jackets, I like to use style tags of sheepskin, vintage, and penny lane. Penny lane was a new keyword or style tag that I started using this year. Number 16, it was an Aritzia Wilfred Ghana jacket in a size large. This was the faux leather blue one. I think that if this would have been a neutral tone and maybe not leather, it probably would have sold for more, but I'm happy with this. This was a really quick flip. It sold within a couple weeks. Style tags that I like to use on the faux leather is vegan, minimalist, and for this one, I put pastel. I don't think keywords or style tags really have an impact on a Ghana jacket. I think Ghana jackets are just such a sought after style from Aritzia. You should be able to get top dollar for this style. Number 15 on our list is a pair of Fry Melissa tall riding leather boots. These were in a size seven and a half and they sold for $120. I feel like two years ago, these boots were selling for a much higher value. I sourced these for 50 bucks and they sold within two weeks. So nice quick sell. Fry, as long as you can keep the cost of goods down, 
generally should be selling for over $100. Number 14 on the list is a pair of vintage John Fluvog black leather chunky heel loafers. These were in a small size. They were a size six and a half and they sold on Etsy. I felt like because they were vintage, they were very unique. Etsy or eBay was probably going to be the better bet for these shoes to get the top value. They did sell for $125 Canadian, but they were well loved. Like the pictures inside the shoe, these were well worn. I knew that they weren't going to hold a top dollar value. At the end of the day, I was really happy with what I got for them and Etsy really pulled through for me. Number 13 on my list is a pair of Sorel Joan of Arctic black snow boots in a women's size 10. These sold for $125. I love Sorel boots. I feel like if I can find them for a cost of goods of under $25, I'll probably grab them just because they hold a good value. This style in particular is a high value style as well as being a size 10, which is really uncommon to find. If you have a size seven, eight, Maybe it wouldn't sell for as much, but I think because these were a size 10, I was able to get top dollar for them resale wise. Number 12 on this list is one of my favorite brands. I personally love it. It's a pair of Blundstone Brown square toed Chelsea boots. These were in a size seven and they sold for $135. I feel like Blundstone is one of those brands that really holds their value. These pair would have sold for more, but one of the pull tags on the back actually had damage. It looked like someone's puppy had chewed them up. So I think that did have an impact on what I could have got for them. If they would have been in perfect condition, pull tab with no wear, I think these would have sold for over $175. Regardless, I picked these up for 13 bucks. I was happy to sell them in a couple weeks and get that money back in my business. Number 11 on my list is another pair of John Fluvog Hopefuls Bow Round Toe Lace Up Shoes. What a mouthful. These are in a size seven and they sold for $140. What I like to use when I'm sourcing my John Fluvogs is Google Lens. I'll usually take a picture of it and let it do its magic and hopefully it'll show up the style name. If I'm really lucky, it will pull up the John Fluvog site where I'm able to get all the information about the shoes to put into the listing. That is rare. I feel like John Fluvog has made so many different styles of shoes over the years. So it is harder unless the style is a newer style. These ones weren't necessarily necessarily newer, but I was able to get some good information on them. I love picking up John Fluvog. Fun fact, I paid up for these. I paid $65 at a buy sell trade store, but I was still able to flip a profit and make $70 off them. We're halfway through. Number 10 is a Free People Velvet Dreams duster jacket. This actually came from a consignment client of mine. It sold for $140. So after fees, we split the commission. But what I like is I was able to get this listed before Halloween and I used the style tags Bohemian, Goth, and Playboy. Because this does not look like Hugh Hefner, you know, Playboy velvet jacket. It had all the vibes to me, but it was such a gorgeous jacket. And the retail value of that was $400 Canadian. It just blew my mind, but really quick sale. This one sold within a couple days of listing. Number nine on the list is another pair of John Fluvog black heeled midi leather boots in a size nine. These ones sold for $150. I had these for months sitting in a death pile. I couldn't believe it. I opened up a toe and in it were these John Fluvogs and I was like, okay, I need to get this listed. I need to work on these shoes. And they sold within two weeks. I really like this style. It definitely had a contemporary look. It wasn't too crazy, but you knew you were getting the quality boots with the John Fluvog name. For that reason, I am always hunting for John Fluvog. As you guys can see, they're just a top seller in my closet. They are a little bit harder to find, but if you're always looking for them and you're always searching anywhere you go, I feel like you'll come across them once in a while. Number eight on my list is a pair of AS98 green leather lace-up boots in a size seven and a half. AS98 is one of those brands that I never sleep on. They always hold a good value, usually selling for over a hundred dollars. I think this is a brand that you need to be familiar with. You need to know how to recognize. And once you know the key points of it, number one being the bottom, number two, the zipper always says AS98 into it. Once you know these little kind of tips and secrets about them, they're super easy to find. You just have to be in the right place at the right time. And then obviously having a good cost of goods. 
I will pay up for AS98s. I would pay $50 for a pair of boots knowing that they would sell for $120 to $200, depending on the style. This is definitely a brand that ranks really high for me on boots. Number seven on my list is a vintage tan shearling seat sheepskin jacket in a size large this sold for 158 dollars this jacket had all the vibe going with it i love these jackets definitely has that 70s style the tone of the jacket the penny lane the zipper was good quality everything about it if this jacket fit me i think i would have kept it for myself this is one style and material content like shearling and sheepskin that i'm always on the hunt for they hold a good value. If you can source these for under $40, I would grab them, especially if they're in good condition. So just make sure you're checking them over to make sure everything works and it's in general good condition. If so, get it listed on platforms. This is definitely something that I would also list on Etsy and eBay as they hold a really good value on those platforms too. Number six on my list is another pair of John Fluvog leather tall wedge heel boots. These were in a size seven and a half. These sold for $175. I knew that these boots, based on the style of them, the color, being a tall, like knee-high boot, I felt like I could easily get over $150. With John Fluvog, I definitely put more value in the boots and the taller boots than I do in the heels and the shoes. But that's also dependent on the style, the color. Is it a rare one? Is it current? Like there's so many factors. I think your best bet when you're grabbing these shoes is to try and find comparable solds for the style that you're finding. At the end of the day, John Fluvog is just a no-brainer for me. If I'm picking these up for a reasonable price, I'm going to grab them because they're always quick and easy money. Number five on my list is a pair of a Goldie 90s mid-rise loose jeans in a size 24. They definitely were a smaller size and I was a little bit hesitant grabbing them, but they sold for $180. I paid, I think about $40 for these jeans. I definitely paid up, but I knew the style of them being the straight leg, the ripped, all the factors, that this was gonna be a pair of jeans that would hold over $150 value in Canada. I think what you have to be cautious of when you're grabbing a Goldie jeans is definitely the skinnier jeans aren't holding the same value. I was just looking at sold comps on skinny jeans because I found a pair in one of the stores this week but the sold comps were like 70, maybe $80. So I think you have to be cautious on the styles that you're picking up and making sure that it is a current style. Generally, the current styles are gonna be wide leg, straight leg, and flare leg. Number four on this list is an eBay sale. I feel like this year I didn't have a lot of high value eBay sales, but I wasn't really cross listing everything over there. These shoes are a pair of John Fluvog chunky heel wood sole leather lace up shoes. Yep, that's all in the title, size eight, and they sold for $185. These were a really rare one. I couldn't find stock photos, I couldn't find information on them. And to be honest, I feel like I kind of undersold them. Although I paid like $30 for them, and the money, like the sale, happened within a couple days. I can't complain. I feel like I still got a pretty good dollar for them compared to what I paid out for them. They went to someone that was an avid collector and she was so excited. She sent me the sweetest note after she reached them and they fit her perfectly. I wish that I could find these shoes all the time. These are like the shoes of my dreams, just very unique, kind of boho. I like the 90s style, just a really rare find. I don't expect that I'll ever be able to repeat this sale. Number three on my list is a Volcom Fern insulated Gore-Tex jacket, and this sold for $200. This was a jacket that Lena had purchased two years prior, and it was new with tags. Now, she paid $230 for this jacket, and we were not able to get the cost back. So even though this is a fantastic sale, we actually lost money on this one. But I think it's worth putting into here because Volcom is a brand that if you're getting the good snowboard winter jackets, especially in the Gore-Tex material, they hold a good value. I am always looking for good Gore-Tex jackets and it doesn't have to be like Patagonia, Arcteryx, North Face. I think there's other brands out there that do hold a good value that people are looking for. And this would be a snowboard brand that I think you should be on the lookout for. 
Number two on my list, we are getting up there. We have two more sales. Number two is a pair of Gucci boots. These were a square toe cowgirl style in a size seven and a half, and they sold for $200 on Poshmark. Now, I paid up for these. They ended up costing me about a hundred and I think forty dollars to um, source them. So I didn't actually make a really big profit. And I was trying to dabble my toes into designer stuff, but again, I just don't know enough about it. And I think it would require some more research. Still happy with this sale. I'm so happy I didn't lose money. I feel like a lot of people that dabble in designer end up losing money at the beginning. And I'm just happy to walk away with what I invested and just a little bit more. And while we're on the topic of Gucci, my top sale for 2022 is a Gucci GG monogram medium web handle bucket tote. <laughs> Again, I'm not familiar with, with these styles. It sold for $350. This was a fantastic sale. This was another one where I kind of tried to dabble into designer stuff. I did pay up for this bag and I actually only made about 10 or $20 off of this one as well. So as much as I'm very excited to share this sale as my top sale, it wasn't a huge profit sale. I would love to sell more designer items. I feel like I need to do some more research into brands and styles that are selling. Gucci is a brand that can do very well, but looking back now, this just wasn't one of those coveted styles. Needless to say, if you find anything Gucci out at a thrift store, buy, sell, trade, consignment, where it is reasonably priced, do your research, find sold comps for the exact style of what you're finding and make sure the profit margin meets your standards. I think now looking back, I probably wouldn't have taken a chance on these two items, but in the heat of the moment, I was just gung ho and I was like, yeah, let's do it. Still a good sale. No complaints. I did not lose money. These are my top 20 sales for 2022. I feel like 2022 has been a fabulous year. It's been good to me. I'm actually going to have a recap video coming out in the next week. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I'm going to break down what Poshmark has paid me out how many items, what's my top selling brands, basically all the information from my analytics on the Poshmark app. I am sharing it all. I'm putting it all out there and hopefully this helps you when you're out reselling. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this content. Make sure you give me a thumbs up on the way out. I am wishing you all many sales and I'll see you next time. Bye. Pull tab and, and pull Pull tab with no, pull tab with no, no, what the hell am I trying to say? Pull tab with no <laughs> tan shearling skeep sheep. <laughs> num, mm, shearling seep sheep. <laughs>